So hello, everybody. I'm Peter Larson with the Ottawa Forum on Israel-Palestine, and I'm great, so, so pleased to have with me my, my friend, Abdul Jabbar Asiri. Abdul, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you for your efforts. Uh, you're doing a great job. So thanks. Very kind of you, Abdul. Now, Abdul, I know, is a Palestinian refugee. Um, um, just tell us where you were born, uh, Abdul. I was born in Bissan, that is in the Galili area, and in December 1943. All right. So, so I actually have been to Bissan, partly because you suggested it to me. It's a rich, luscious, green uh, valley, very productive um, uh, uh, valley. But there are no Palestinians there. How come? Uh, because the Bissan, as you mentioned, like a agriculture valley, that was very, very important. And the early uh, Jewish immigrant or Israelis who start to come was concentrating on that area to be, to sit them in agriculture areas. And so that was the area like from the twenties up, like immigrants, they were brought into those areas to be established in there. And then, and then, so there was there was a considerable amount of European Jewish immigration, um, but right. then what happened uh, in 1947, 48? But you won't remember that because you were you were born in 43. So um, that that's right. No, it is uh, sure, like very little memory from for myself, but from my parents, what they talk about, uh, they were enjoying that place, and many relatives we have in the same place. Uh, the area, because it is agriculture and there was many new settlers coming into that area, there was resistance in it. And actually the Golan Brigade in 1948, in May 1948, came and occupied Bissan, all of Bissan and kicked all the people that was there at that time to different areas. Where did your parents get, have to go to? Um... Uh, our my parents went directly to Jenin area because Jenin is about twenty kilometers southwest of Bissan. We're talking about a pretty small geographical area. The whole thing is not not very big, right? That that's a true, and that is, uh, if you want, I can describe it as the Ottawa area and just describe it. If you feel like, if you have time for that, just the size the size of the city of Ottawa. Exactly, it is the size of Ottawa. It's very much the same. Ottawa, let's say the, the, the Capitol Hill is situated on the Ottawa River. Beside it is the Gatineau Park, Nipine, and let's say Kanata, which is about 50 kilometers by 50 kilometers area. Right. Uh -huh. Bissan was on the Jordan River, just four kilometers away to the, the Jordan River is four kilometers to the east of Bissan. The Sea of Galilee and Tabaria is about 20 kilometers north. Nazareth is about 25 kilometers to the northwest. And Jenin is 20 kilometers to the west, sure. so they, southwest. So they fled first to Jenin. Of course, there is a big refugee camp there now. It's quite, um, did they stay very long in Jenin? We stayed three years. Uh, my dad was a surveyor working for the British government at the time, and he got some compensation when British left. And we settled in Jenin. He tried to do some business because he was working for the government. Immediately, as soon as the UNRWA was established, he was recognized immediately and giving a status as UNRWA refugee, recognized and uh, and offered him to go to the Zerka refugee camp. And Wait. that's where we went in 1951. And where's the Zerka refugee camp? The Zerka refugee camp is in Jordan. And the Zerka is about 40 kilometers east of Amman. OK. Now, and when, you, when you got to Zerka, that was luxury, right? They gave you a house, they gave you a car, they gave you lots of food. That, was that the situation you had in, you remember in Zerka? It was not luxury because it was a tent. The refugee camps was tents at that time. 
and uh, the refugees start building like mud sort of houses instead of the tents because that area is desert and sometimes strong winds come to that area. And the, the area, the refugee camp area is a small area surrounded by the train tracks that goes between Saudi Arabia and Syria. Mm. So, so you, you live there with your parents and siblings for how long in the Zerka refugee camp? Uh, we lived from 52 because we went first like in, to Zerka, then we get into the camp. So it was from 52 to 61, to 61. Nine years in the refugee camp. Exactly. Were you in a tent the whole time or were you able to build yourself a house? No, no, it was, it was uh, built like built in uh, uh, blocks of mud instead of cement blocks. Right. People were making from mud and uh, wheat blocks the same thing and building Sure. like boundaries for their area in the right. tent. And your, your father was working for UNRWA at the time, so you had a bit of revenue, is that uh, No, wasn't working for UNRWA. He oh. was like, what, my dad was working as a surveyor, assistant surveyor with the British government. But in, but in and Jordan- so later, was... Yeah, and later he found work with the, uh, an American company called H4. And that was establishing roads between Iraq and Jordan. Abdul, when when did you psychologically? When did you, or did you ever come to a point where you say, you know, the re return which is which is promised to us by the UN, which is fair to us, that it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime? Did did you did you come to that point? Or are you still every year I say maybe it's going to be this year? How how do you relate to what is a very very fair? Uh, demand the right of return? Uh, I honestly feel the right of return is a right for us and it is possibly can be achieved. I feel like all this was a conspiracy to control probably the whole Middle East. Mm -hmm. However, the main people affected was the Palestinians. And I feel doesn't matter what time is gonna take, this problem will be resolved and justice may be achieved in, in that sense. I felt like I, when I graduated from technical high school in Amman Technical High School, I worked for the Jordanian army as a civilian for two years as instrument mechanic. And at the, when the war happened in 67, I became so sick of the work and what happened, the conditions that I was advised to leave the country. So I left in January 68 and went to Kuwait and worked two years in Kuwait, but I couldn't also handle Kuwait. My face was uh, like sensitive to sun and often had problems. I applied to immigrate to Canada and succeeded two years after in 1970. Wow. And I came to Canada in 1970 in June, June 4th, 1970. Well, Abdul, um, the Canada is the better for it. Um, we're, we're glad you came. And um, your story is a very powerful one. So thank you very much for sharing. It's one, it's one of hundreds of thousands of uh, stories of uh, unfairness, injustice, pain, and people overcoming injustice. So thank you very much for, for sharing your views with us today. Thank you, thank you for your effort. And that's what we really need is work together, find a solution for this problem and have everybody lives in peace. Arabs, uh, Jews, Americans, uh, Canadians, we all uh, humans and we all really care for each other. All we need is to forget the other aspects. That, and that's a nice message, nice way to end up the conversation. Thanks so much, Abdul. Shukran. Thank you, thank you.